Three years ago, my life had a dramatic change. My boyfriend moved in. <laughs> All of a sudden, I had to share my kitchen, my TV, my couch. And at the same time, I changed job. I had always worked with civil engineering structures, such as bridges and buildings, which are quite fixed to the ground. And my new job was in the field of aerospace engineering, where structures are supposed to fly. So on one hand, I was very excited, but on the other hand, I was very much afraid of all those changes happening in my life. Will it work out with him? Will I manage to adapt to the new work environment? But what I didn't know back then was that all those changes would actually make my life better. And I also didn't know I was about to learn how our natural human instinct block us to build a sustainable world. And that's what I want to share with you today. Air traffic is responsible for about 15% of all CO2 emissions from all transport sources. These emissions are related to the amount of fuel burned by the aircraft engines when transporting people and goods from one place to the other. For example, when you go on a holiday trip with your family to New York, only on the flights from Amsterdam to New York and back, the amount of energy you're spending would be enough to supply with electricity your house back home for four full years. How can we decrease this amount of energy that we are spending in air traffic? Well, we could simply forbid you to go on holidays with, with, to New York with your family. However, I don't think you will ever give in on your right to fly. An alternative to this is actually to try to make the aircraft lighter. There are many ways we can do this, but I will touch upon the one that I dedicate my work to. One airplane is not made of one single piece. It's made of smaller pieces that are then assembled together to make the aircraft. The traditional way we assemble all those pieces together is using rivets. For those of you who don't know what rivets are, riveting is in fact quite similar to what you do when you receive your new bed frame at home in a thousand pieces and you assemble it using screws or nails to have the full bed frame. In a real, in a real airplane, I actually bought a real part of an airplane to, see you, to show you, these are the rivets. So each of these points are the rivets in the airplane. What people normally don't realize is that when you're drilling a hole in the structure or in your bed frame to introduce the rivet or the nail, you're also introducing a weak point in the structure. So the nail or the rivet is holding the two parts together, but it's also introducing a weak point in your structure. In a complete aircraft such as this one, there are on average 1.5 million rivets, which means 1.5 million weak points. So the aircraft structure can quite resemble like a Swiss cheese. Good news are that in order to make the aircraft still safe with all those weak points, we compensate each of the weak points by making the structure thicker adding extra material. However, adding this extra material makes the aircraft heavier, and therefore we spend more fuel and therefore more energy. Wouldn't you agree with me, it would be much more sustainable if we would find a way to get rid of all those weak points? After years and years of research, I found a great solution. 
and is something that you're using since you were a child to connect two parts together. The solution is glue. But then the question arises, how would you feel to step into an aircraft which was being held together only by glue? Fighting against this mistrust that you are feeling is actually one of the main challenges of my research. In fact, gluing has been used in aircrafts for many, many decades. For example, in 1949, the British company Haviland was the first one daring to use glue to join metal structures in an airplane. However, only five years after being in service, this airplane was involved in three fatal accidents. Accidents investigation revealed that the failure of the aircraft started at the two top window of the fuselage panel. Now, in the design of the airplane, these windows, they were supposed to be glued to the, to the fuselage of the airplane. However, since this was a very innovative idea for the time, they decided in the manufacturing of the aircraft to reinforce that bond line by using extra rivets. The weak points created by those extra rivets were the cause of the crash. The fear of change from a past routine to a brand new technology had catastrophic consequences. Nowadays, although we have been expanding the use of glues in an airplane, every bond line in an aircraft is always reassured by extra rivets. These extra rivets, in engineering terms, are actually called chicken rivets because they are applied out of fear. Today, 60 years later, the fear of change is still holding us back to use the full potential of glues in an airplane. This natural human instinct of fear of change is holding us back to build a more sustainable world. So, three years ago, I was afraid of all those changes happening in my life. But in fact, the boyfriend became husband, and my new job gave me the opportunity to be here today. So, don't be afraid of changes. You might be losing something good, but you will probably end up gaining something even better. Thank you. <laughs>